The primary way computers represent data is as a series of ones and zeros, binary numbers. While it's fairly straightforward how one might do that, it's not as obvious how negative numbers should be encoded. Optimally, operations like addition should just work, whether we're adding positive or negative numbers. The convention of two's complement has become the most popular solution to this question. The rules seem a bit strange at first, but in this video we'll explore why it's useful, and a nifty mathematical property it has which explains how it works. This video assumes you have some familiarity with binary, but we can do a little bit of a review. In the base 10 numeric system that we're all used to, you'll see numbers like this. As you may recall from school, each of these numbers has a place. The ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and so on. These are all powers of 10. And so when we write something like 357, that's really just a notation that means we've got three hundreds plus five tens plus seven ones. Binary is really the same as base 10, except for two differences. First, the only digits we're allowed to use are zero and one. And secondly, the places rather than being powers of 10 are powers of two. So in this case, 1101 is just a notation that means I've got one eight plus one four, zero twos, and one one. Moving on to something a little bigger, this is a full byte. Eight bits together give us a full byte. And so we can use the same procedure to figure out what this stands for, again by writing out our powers of two for each of the places. And then just adding them together, we've got a 128, we've got a 64, we don't have any 32s, but we've got a 16, we don't have any 8s or 4s, but we've got a 2 and no 1s. So that 8-bit number is really just notation for 210. Similarly, if we go and do the math, we'll see that this is 46. And so far we've been treating these 8-bit numbers as unsigned binary integers. Unsigned meaning they're never negative. But you can choose to treat any byte as a signed byte instead. And to do that, we use the convention of two's complement. So let's say we started with this number for 46, and we wanted to find its negation, its inverse, negative 46. What we would do is two steps. We flip all the bits, and then we add one. Flip all the bits, and then we add 1. Hmm, that's that number we saw before for 210. Does that mean that 210 is negative 46? Well, sort of. It all depends on whether you're treating that byte as signed or unsigned. So this sequence of bits, if you think of it as a signed byte, is negative 46. It's the thing you would add to 46 to get 0 but you could also choose to treat it as an unsigned byte, in which case it would represent 210. It's all up to the programmer. When you treat a byte as unsigned, you get to use the full range between 0 and 255 when you choose to represent a number. You'll see there are no negative numbers here. But if you want to treat a byte as signed, your range is a bit different. It doesn't go up quite as high. It only goes up to 127. But the good news is you can now go down below zero all the way down to negative 128. And when you look at a sequence of bits that you choose to treat as signed, you can take a look at the uppermost bit. That most significant bit, if it's one, will tell you that that number is a negative number, and if it is zero, it is not a negative number. Again, this is only if you're choosing to treat the byte as a signed byte. To get a feel for the two's complement numbers, we've got a binary representation of the number here. This is the signed representation in decimal, and this is the unsigned representation in decimal. So as we start cycling through, unsigned and signed are the same, and you can see the binary slowly creep up. And if we go a little bit faster, all makes sense. And then we get to around the crossover point. So once we're at 127, all of these bits are 1. And our sign bit here is 0, so we're still non-negative. But as soon as we go up higher, 
Our unsigned has gone up to 128, but our signed has cycled back to the very low end to negative 128. And that's what you get when that topmost bit is one and everyone else is zero. And now as we continue to advance, they both increase, the signed goes closer and closer to zero from the negatives, and the unsigned continues to go up. And then finally, the signed is at negative one, which is what you get when you have all ones. And our unsigned is at the end of its range at 255. So if we go up by one more, everyone cycles back around to zero. To get a handle on why this notation is useful, let's try a few examples. What happens if we were to add one and negative one? So recall that this means negative one because if I were to take this and get its inverse, I would flip all the bits and I would have a bunch of ones followed by a zero and then I would have to add one and that would give me this. So what happens if I add this and this? One plus one is zero, carry the one. One plus one is zero, carry the one. One plus one is zero all the way to the end until we get zero. So sure enough, one plus negative one gives us zero. What about two plus negative one? If I add starting here, zero plus one is one. One plus one is zero, carry the one. One plus one is zero, carry the one and so on. So I end up with one when I do two plus negative one. Now let's try varying our negative numbers. So we're gonna do 116, and first we're gonna add negative one, and that sure enough gives us 115. What if I try to add negative two, negative three, negative four? You'll see my answer keeps on decreasing as my second add end goes down and down and down and down. And once I have 116 plus negative 115, I magically end up at one. And if I go down one further, 116 plus negative 116, now we're taking the two's complement of 116 and adding it to 116, and we end up with a perfect array of zeros. We've explored what two's complement is. We've explored why it's useful. But how exactly is it working? How, why does it just make everything work out so nicely? When we do arithmetic, we're used to an infinite number of numbers, numbers that go off in both directions, positive and negative until infinity. But there's another kind of arithmetic called modular arithmetic, where we just have a finite number of numbers. In this example, we're doing mod five arithmetic because we have five digits, zero through four. In many cases, the arithmetic is the same as we're used to. If we were to add one plus two, we would get three. If we were to add two plus two, we would get four. But if our sum would normally exceed four, we just wrap around. So if we added two plus three, starting at two, one, two, three, we would wrap around to zero. And if we did two plus four, starting at two, one, two, three, four, we would wrap around and get to one. In fact, it's better to think about it as a number circle rather than a number line. So now when we start at two and we add four, one, two, three, four, we just naturally go around the circle and end up at one. One of the properties of modular arithmetic is how you find the inverse so easily. In this case, we're doing mod five, and if you wanted to find the inverse of a number, you take five minus that number. So for example, what would the inverse of four be? What would I need to add to four to get to zero? If I take five minus four, that would give me one, and sure enough, adding one brings me to zero. What's the inverse of two? Five minus two is three, and sure enough, if I add one, two, three, I end up back at zero. What does this have to do with two's complement? Well, if you look at the example we did before, where we showed that the same sequence of bits can be treated either as 210 if it's unsigned or negative 46 if it's signed, you'll see there's a relationship between 210 and 46. And that is if you take 256, subtract 46, then you'll get back to 210. In fact, arithmetic with single bytes is mod 256 arithmetic.
When treated as unsigned, these numbers go from 0 through 255. That's 256 numbers. So using the property from before, I can always find the inverse of a number by taking 256 minus that number. But what does this have to do with the flip all bits and the add one nonsense? Well, to illustrate, let's say we were taking 255 minus a number rather than 256. 255 represented in binary is just all ones. Let's see what happens when we take all ones and from that we subtract this number. Every zero in this number will result in a one and every one in this number will result in a zero. So taking 255 and subtracting from that a byte simply flips all the bits in that byte. So if two's complement is about flipping all bits and then adding one, well, we've just seen that flipping all bits is the same as taking 255 minus that number. And then if we add one, that's effectively taking 256 minus that number. So here we see that two's complement, those two steps, flip all bits, add one, is exactly the same as the modular arithmetic property of taking the modulus and then subtracting from that some number that you're trying to get the inverse of. We can break out the two steps to perform two's complement by using the com and the neg instructions. The com or complement instruction just flips all the bits and that's the first step. The neg instruction does both steps. So it will do the com to flip all the bits and then it will add one. So starting with a 1, flipping all the bits gives us this, which is actually a negative 2. And then we have to add 1 to get the 2's complement, and that brings us back to negative 1. Sometimes watching a thing in fast motion helps it gel at an intuitive level. And sometimes watching a thing in fast motion makes no sense at all. In this video, we explored what two's complement is. We explored how it makes the regular binary addition just work with signed numbers. And we saw the relationship between two's complement and modular arithmetic, in particular mod 256 arithmetic, to give us a clue why it just works so nicely. For the illustrations, I used a visualization tool called the Binary Playground. And in an upcoming video on Coco Town, I will go into detail on the code behind this and how it works. Until then, thanks for watching.